Nine Mile Prairie has been used for university research since the 1920s. It's actually only been owned by the university since the early 1980s. Uh, back in the 1920s when the famous ecologist Weaver was doing early prairie work out here, uh, this was privately owned farmland and then most of this area became part of the Air Force Base when this was a strategic air command base. And then the Lincoln Airport Authority sold the land to the university back in the early 1980s. So that's how it's been protected over the years. The incredible thing about visiting a tall grass prairie is there's something happening the entire season. Uh, so the first flowers uh, like the wild indigo and some of the prairie violets are gonna be flowering in early April. And there'll be something flowering throughout the growing season. And we're gonna move, move more into the members of the sunflower family later in the season. So we're starting now in mid-August just to see the goldenrods and the sunflowers and the asters starting to come into flower. So it's a seasonal progression just like you would have in a, in a well-designed home garden. I think it, from an aesthetic side, and everybody has their own aesthetics, but it's this balance where the grasses make up 60 or 70 percent of the mass, but then you've got, well, in your average square meter, your average square yard, we're going to have about 20 different species of plants, so there's other stuff packed in, and that's changing over the growing season, what flowers you're going to be seeing. The grasses are also changing over the growing season. We think of the tall prairie grasses like big blue stem and Indian grass and switchgrass as being the, the prairie grasses, and they are. But you also have cool season species like June grass and porcupine grass uh, that are coming in earlier in the Caesar season, and they're, they're kind of done with their show by now. Wild rye, because of a heavy rainfall this year, has been flowering later than it normally would. We can still find wild rye seed heads out here. and. Uh, then you're going to find some other smaller prairie grasses that are warm season grasses like side oats grama and prairie drop seed starting now uh, that round out the picture with those big tall grasses. If you think of this whole landscape except for occasional wetlands and a few trees along the river courses like in Wilderness Park, this was a prairie landscape when the surveyors came here in the 1850s say. And uh, very little that native prairie is left. So uh, we got to remember that this botanical diversity here is part of our heritage in terms of a, of a genetic resource. The value of Nine Mile Prairie or any of these tall grass prairie remnants, uh, part of its aesthetics, uh, it's a beautiful, diverse, heterogeneous place to spend a, a sunny afternoon, especially in the fall. Uh, part of its conservation. This is our heritage. These are species that we have that used to be common, many of them, and now are rare. 